Hello, Jedediah. The casting process for Citizen Kane was a carefully considered affair. Orson Welles, the director, sought out actors who could bring depth and authenticity to their roles. For the title role of Charles Foster Kane, Welles chose himself, believing that he could best portray the complex character. The part of Kane's first wife, Emily Norton, was given to Ruth Warwick. Warwick was chosen for her ability to convey both strength and vulnerability. Her chemistry with Wells was evident during auditions, making her an ideal fit for the role. Joseph Cotton, a longtime friend of Wells, was cast as Jedediah Leland. Cotton's natural ease and rapport with Wells translated well on screen, helping to create a believable friendship between their characters. For the role of Mr. Bernstein, the business-savvy right-hand man to Kane, Wells selected Everett Sloan. Sloan's understated performance provided a stark contrast to Wells' flamboyant Kane, contributing to the film's rich tapestry of characters. The part of Kane's second wife, Susan Alexander, was played by Dorothy Cummingor. Cummingor's audition showcased her ability to portray Susan's innocence and ambition, making her the clear choice for the role. In casting Citizen Kane, Wells focused on finding actors who could embody the spirit of his characters, rather than simply relying on star power. This approach resulted in a dynamic ensemble that brought depth and authenticity to the film. Something bigger than an opera house, anyway. Nerd! Yes, sir. Oh, I'm coming. Uh, uh. Orson Welles, the director of Citizen Kane, brought a unique vision to life through his innovative approach to filmmaking. Welles was heavily influenced by German Expressionism and Italian Neorealism, which is evident in Citizen Kane's striking visual style and exploration of social issues. Wells employed unconventional techniques such as deep focus cinematography, which allowed for multiple planes of focus within a single shot. This created a sense of depth and realism that was groundbreaking for its time. He also utilized innovative sound design, incorporating overlapping dialogue and ambient noise to enhance the film's emotional impact. Collaboration was crucial to Wells' process. He worked closely with his cast and crew, encouraging improvisation and experimentation. For instance, he and cinematographer Greg Tolan spent weeks rehearsing and planning each shot to ensure they captured the desired effect. Wells also collaborated with his cast, allowing them to develop their characters through extensive rehearsals and discussions. Wells' direction was characterized by his willingness to take risks and push boundaries. He challenged conventional narrative structures, blurring the lines between reality and fiction. This can be seen in Citizen Kane's non-linear narrative, which unfolds through a series of flashbacks, adding layers of complexity to the story. In summary, Orson Welles' directorial vision for Citizen Kane was marked by his innovative use of visual and auditory techniques, his collaborative approach, and his willingness to challenge conventional storytelling norms. His vision has left an indelible mark on the world of cinema, inspiring generations of filmmakers and continuing to captivate audiences today. Anybody think I hadn't been a good husband? Some of fifty thousand dollars a year is to be paid to you and Mr. Citizen Kane, directed by Orson Welles, is a classic movie from 1941 known for its innovative storytelling techniques. The film follows the life of Charles Foster Kane, a wealthy newspaper magnate, and is presented in a non-linear narrative that explores the concept of memory and perception. One fascinating fact about Citizen Kane is that it was Welles' first feature film, and he was only 25 years old at the time. Despite his lack of experience, Wells served as the director, writer, and star of the movie, showcasing his incredible talent and creativity. Another intriguing anecdote is that the film's ending, which features the iconic line Rosebud, was kept a secret during production. The crew members were not informed of the object's identity, and even the actors who spoke the line were not told its significance. As for a particular scene that has had a lasting impact, the opening sequence is particularly memorable. The film begins with a stunning long take that takes the viewer through a vast and mysterious estate, creating an air of intrigue and mystery that permeates the entire movie. Do you have a favorite memory or personal experience related to Citizen Kane? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. And stay tuned for more funny, shocking, and sad facts about this classic movie. Collecting somebody that's collecting diamonds. Anyway, he ain't... The production of Citizen Kane, directed by Orson Welles, was known for its innovative techniques and grand set designs. The film sets were constructed in a large studio, where an entire city block was built to create the Zanadu estate, filled with extravagant rooms and thousands of props. The main character's newspaper office was also built from scratch, featuring a working printing press. 
Locations for Citizen Kane varied, with some scenes shot on sound stages and others in real locations. For instance, the opening scene of the film, showcasing a snowy landscape, was filmed at Lake Tahoe. However, due to harsh weather conditions, the crew had to deal with logistical challenges, such as malfunctioning equipment and frozen pipes. One notable innovative technique employed during the production of Citizen Kane was the use of deep focus cinematography. This method allowed for both foreground and background elements to be in sharp focus, creating a sense of depth and realism. To achieve this, the film's cinematographer, Greg Toland, used special lenses and lighting techniques. Another groundbreaking aspect of Citizen Kane's production was its non-linear narrative structure, which involved extensive use of flashbacks. This unconventional storytelling approach required careful planning and execution, as the film had to maintain a coherent timeline while revealing crucial plot points. Despite the numerous challenges faced during production, Citizen Kane became a milestone in film history, recognized for its technical achievements and compelling storytelling. Some time ago. Citizen Kane is often regarded as one of the greatest films of all time. This American film, released in 1941, is a chronicle of the life of Charles Foster Kane, a character based on the powerful newspaper publisher William Randolph Hearst. The film's structure is unconventional, with Kane's life being revealed through a series of flashbacks from interviews with people who knew him well. The film is highly influential, both in terms of story and technique. The story is darker and more bleak than many films of the time, and it openly insults a powerful figure who was still alive at the time, leading to attempts to ban the film. On a technical level, Citizen Kane is known for its many innovative techniques. For example, director Orson Welles drilled a hole in the set to create a unique low-angle shot. Every shot and scene in the film showcases technical innovation, making it a special effects picture in its own right. However, the film's technical innovations are not its only strength. Citizen Kane is also highly entertaining, with true human emotion, iconic lines of dialogue, and compelling imagery that culminates in one of cinema's greatest twists. Despite the lack of action sequences, explosions, or slapstick humor, the film is captivating and worth watching multiple times. While some may argue that Citizen Kane is the most important film of all time, it is important to note that many of cinema's truly groundbreaking techniques can be traced back to earlier films, such as A Trip to the Moon, The Great Train Robbery, The Birth of a Nation, and Intolerance. Nonetheless, Citizen Kane remains a highly influential and entertaining film that is worth watching for anyone interested in the history of cinema. Very dearly. And his mother, I guess he always loved her. How about his second wife? Susan. The musical score and soundtrack of Citizen Kane, directed by Orson Welles, were crucial in enhancing the narrative and emotional tone of the film. The score was primarily composed by Bernard Herrmann, who is known for his innovative and expressive style. Herrmann's music for Citizen Kane was designed to reflect the complex character of the protagonist, Charles Foster Kane. The score is often melancholic and grand, mirroring Kane's rise and fall. Herrmann used a large orchestra to create a sound that was both powerful and emotive. The main theme, Newsreel, is a fast-paced, dramatic piece that underscores the film's opening newsreel sequence. The soundtrack also includes popular songs from the era in which the film is set, further immersing the audience in the story. For instance, the song O, oh, Mr. Kane is used to express the character Rosebud's longing for Kane. Herrmann's approach to composing for Citizen Kane was deeply intertwined with the film's narrative. He once stated, I write what I see and what I feel on the screen. This is evident in the score's ability to heighten the emotional impact of the film's key scenes, such as Kane's death scene, which is accompanied by a poignant solo violin. The music in Citizen Kane is not just a background element, but a vital component of the storytelling. It complements the narrative, enhances the emotional tone, and provides a rich auditory experience that deepens the audience's engagement with the film. The newspaper for 10 minutes. What do you do in a newspaper in the middle of the night? Emily, my dear. Charlton Heston held Citizen Kane as his favorite film, which marked Orson Welles' directorial debut in 1941, the same year John Huston did it with The Maltese Falcon. Welles discovered New York actress Ruth Warwick, bringing her to Hollywood for the role of Emily Norton Kane. He sought a lady of charm and good upbringing, not just someone who could act like one, claiming there are no ladies in Hollywood. After several tests, he concluded Warwick was the perfect fit. Wells and Houston maintained a close friendship from the 1940s until Wells' death in 1985. Their paths would cross again in Huston's Moby Dick, 
where Wells made a cameo, and in Wells Unfinished The Other Side of the Wind, with Houston in the lead role. Thank you. I called her myself the day after he died. I thought maybe somebody ought. One of the most iconic scenes in Citizen Kane is the sled scene, where young Kane sled, Rosebud, is taken away in a snowstorm. The scene is filled with symbolism, representing the loss of childhood innocence. The director, Orson Welles, used deep focus cinematography, keeping everything in the frame and focus to show the connection between Kane's past and present. This technique was innovative for its time and has since been widely imitated. The scene where Kane's first wife, Emily, leaves him is also iconic. The use of low angle shots and high contrast lighting creates a sense of drama and tension Actress Ruth Warwick, who played Emily, said in an interview that the scene was very emotional and that she and Wells both cried during filming. The scene where Kane stands in front of a large mirror, practicing his campaign speech, is another standout. The mirror reflects Kane's growing megalomania and the isolation that comes with it. Wells used a special effects technique called force perspective to make the room appear larger than it was. The final scene, where the camera pans through Kane's possessions before revealing Rosebud burning in a furnace, is a powerful commentary on the emptiness of material wealth. The revelation of Rosebud as Kane's sled is a poignant moment, revealing the vulnerability and innocence of a man who had become larger than life. These iconic scenes have had a lasting impact on cinema, inspiring generations of filmmakers and captivating audiences with their innovative techniques and powerful storytelling. I absolutely adore you. Charles, even newspaper men have to sleep. In the movie Citizen Kane, the reporter Jerry Thompson's face is always hidden in shadows, never fully revealed. This filming technique adds an air of mystery to Thompson's character. Orson Welles, the director and lead actor of Citizen Kane, received some alarming warnings during filming. One story claims that William Randolph Hearst attempted to discredit Welles by setting up a photographer in his hotel room to capture a scandalous moment with a naked woman. In another version of the story, Wells was warned about an underage girl waiting for him in his hotel room while he was lecturing in Buffalo. Despite these distractions, filming continued. The actor George Coolerus, who played Kane's legal guardian, had an unusual experience during filming. He posed for two hours for a papier-mâché statue of himself, and later successfully petitioned the Screen Actors Guild for payment for those two hours of work. These behind-the-scenes stories add an extra layer of intrigue to the movie Citizen Kane. Released in 1941, Citizen Kane, directed by Orson Welles, created a significant cultural and social impact. The film's innovative storytelling techniques, non-linear narrative, and deep focus photography were groundbreaking. Audiences were captivated by the mysterious life of Charles Foster Kane, a character loosely based on the powerful newspaper magnate William Randolph Hearst. The movie resonated with people due to its exploration of themes like power, ambition, isolation, and the corrupting influence of wealth, which were particularly relevant during the Great Depression and the rise of media tycoons. It sparked discussions about the role of journalism, politics, and the private lives of public figures, contributing to cultural and social dialogues. Citizen Kane has also had a lasting influence on popular culture. Its innovative filmmaking techniques have been widely adopted and emulated by filmmakers worldwide. The film's enigmatic central character, memorable lines, and unforgettable visuals have been referenced and parodied in various forms of media, including television shows, movies, and literature. Moreover, the movie has been analyzed for its commentary on social and cultural themes, such as the American dream, the corrupting influence of power, and the consequences of unchecked ambition. These discussions have continued to evolve over time, making Citizen Kane a timeless and relevant piece of cinema that continues to captivate and inspire new generations of audiences. No, you don't have a way in. Oh, I surely do. You've so been wonderful. You the famous line Rosebud from the movie, widely believed to be one of the greatest quotes in film history, was featured in a script originally titled American. This line has even been colorfully adapted as a symbolic metaphor in various cultural discussions. A controversy arose when Ted Turner considered colorizing the film, which prompted a strong public reaction against altering the movie. This incident was a significant factor in the establishment of a requirement for future video and TV releases of films to include a disclaimer if they have been modified in any way. It is important to note that Orson Welles owned the rights to the film, 
making it impossible for Turner to colorize it. Despite popular belief, there is no evidence that Wells made any statement regarding the situation as he owned the film and had the final say on any changes. The significance of Rosebud in the movie has endured as it was ranked as the number 17 greatest movie quote by the American Film Institute, highlighting its impact and cultural relevance. I've got his trunk all packed. I've had it packed. Citizen Kane, directed by Orson Welles and released in 1941, is often regarded as one of the greatest films in the history of cinema. The movie received widespread critical acclaim, with many reviewers praising its innovative storytelling techniques, complex characters, and groundbreaking cinematography. The New York Times film critic Bosley Crowther, in his review, called Citizen Kane a tremendous achievement in the art of the moving picture, highlighting its extraordinary cleverness and power. Similarly, the Chicago Sun's film critic, Nelson Bell, described the film as a remarkable piece of work and a milestone in motion picture achievement. The film's innovative narrative structure, which employs a non-linear storyline in multiple perspectives, was particularly praised by critics. The use of deep focus photography, which allowed for both foreground and background elements to be in sharp focus, was also widely admired. Citizen Kane was nominated for nine Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Actor for Orson Welles. However, it only won the award for Best Original Screenplay, which was shared by Welles and Herman J. Mankiewicz. Despite the film's critical success, it was a box office failure, and its initial release was met with mixed audience reactions. The accolades and awards that Citizen Kane received are significant for those involved in the film, as they helped to establish Orson Welles as a major talent in the film industry. The film's enduring popularity and critical acclaim have also solidified its place in the annals of cinema history, and it continues to be studied and analyzed by film scholars and enthusiasts alike. In short, Citizen Kane's critical reception and awards are a testament to its groundbreaking techniques, compelling storytelling, and enduring impact on the world of cinema. Uh, Mr. Kane. Mr. Kane, on behalf of all the employees of the Inquirer... Mr. Bernstein, thank you very much. In the film Citizen Kane, Everett Sloan made his debut as Bernstein, the general manager of Kane's publishing empire. Despite it being his first role, Sloan had to age several decades for the part. Ruth Warwick, who played Kane's first wife, was one of the last cast members to pass away, outlived only by Sonny Buff, who played her young son. Joseph Cotton, who portrayed the older Jedediah Lynn, had to learn his lines for a rescheduled scene at the last minute. Cotton was originally meant to use cue cards, but his old age makeup made it difficult. So he took time to memorize his lines instead. A white dress she had on. She was carrying a white parasol. During the filming of Citizen Kane, the relationship between Orson Welles, the director, and Joseph Cotton, who played Jedediah Lowen, was quite friendly. They were good friends off screen, and this camaraderie translated into their performances making their character's friendship more believable. Wells, known for his innovative directorial techniques, often used unconventional methods. For instance, he had the set of Zanadu, Charles Foster Kane's extravagant estate, built to full scale, despite it only appearing in a few scenes. This decision was met with skepticism from the studio, but Wells believed it would help the actors immerse themselves in the environment. The film's groundbreaking use of deep focus cinematography, where both foreground and background are in sharp focus, was a challenge for the camera crew. They had to use special lenses and adjust the lighting to achieve this effect, which was a novel approach at the time. The film's iconic opening scene with the no trespassing sign and the slow zoom into Zanadu was the result of a happy accident. The camera operator misunderstood Wells' instructions and moved the camera closer instead of zooming in, but the result was so effective that it stayed in the film. Despite the film's subsequent recognition as a classic, it was not a commercial success when it was first released. It received mixed reviews and was even nominated for a few Academy Awards, but it lost in all categories. However, over time, its reputation has grown, and it is now considered one of the greatest films ever made. The filming of the scene outside Ma Kane's boarding house in Citizen Kane proved to be a challenge for director Orson Welles. Despite the setting being a snowy field, the breath of the actors was not visible as the scene was filmed on a soundstage. This frustrated Welles, who later attempted to film a winter scene with cold breaths in the magnificent Ambersons. Despite high expectations, Citizen Kane only received the award for Best Original Screenplay at the Academy Awards. 
It was widely believed that block voting by screen extras prevented the film from winning Best Picture and Best Actor, and similar prejudices likely hindered it from receiving any technical awards. Margaret Davis, who appeared in the film, made her final film appearance in Citizen Kane. The movie remains significant in film history, despite not receiving the recognition it was expected to receive during the Academy Awards. This announcement, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Monroe Norton announced the engagement of their daughter Emily Monroe Norton to Mr. Citizen Kane, directed by Orson Welles, has had a profound impact on film history and future filmmaking since its release in 1941. The movie is renowned for its innovative storytelling techniques, non-linear narrative, and deep focus photography. It introduced the concept of combining various filmmaking methods to create a more immersive experience for audiences. Citizen Kane's influence can be seen in many subsequent films, such as Rashomon, The Godfather, and Citizen Smith. Its exploration of power, corruption, and the human condition has inspired numerous filmmakers to create complex and thought-provoking narratives. The film's groundbreaking use of deep focus photography, which allows for multiple planes of action within a single shot, has become a standard technique in modern cinema. Wells's portrayal of the titular character, Charles Foster Kane, has also left a lasting impact on acting in films. His nuanced performance, which conveyed Kane's complexity and ultimate loneliness, has become a benchmark for actors playing multidimensional characters. In addition, Citizen Kane's innovative use of sound, editing, and visual composition has inspired countless filmmakers to push the boundaries of cinematic storytelling. The film's legacy continues to resonate in the film industry, as it remains a touchstone for aspiring filmmakers and a source of inspiration for new and innovative approaches to storytelling. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. In closing... Orson Welles, the director and lead actor of Citizen Kane, had a notable experience with caffeine and tea during the film's production. His consumption of 30 to 40 cups of coffee a day led to caffeine poisoning, causing his skin to turn the color of tannic acid after switching to tea. Cinematographer Greg Tullin's innovative techniques significantly contributed to the film's visual style. He used faster film, more powerful lighting, and a self-blimped camera, enabling deeper focus shots and greater camera movement. Interestingly, William Randolph Hearst's son, in 1985, revealed that he had enjoyed the film and extended an invitation to Orson Welles to visit the Hearst family's San Simon estate, stating that Welles could do so on my tab, despite the film's controversial portrayal of Hearst. This gesture demonstrated a surprising degree of forgiveness and openness. But since, because until a few weeks ago, I had no hope of being elected. Have you seen the 1941 classic, Citizen Kane? This groundbreaking film, directed by Orson Welles, is considered by many to be one of the greatest movies of all time. We'd love to hear about your experiences and memories related to this cinematic masterpiece. How did Citizen Kane impact you personally? Did it shift your viewpoint on cinema or inspire you in any way? Share your stories with us and our community of film enthusiasts. Your engagement is essential to us. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more explorations into the world of classic films. Let's keep the conversation going and learn from each other's perspectives. But I'd be better off. What about